but my dad would always tell us, um, I will never tell you to shut up. That's not a word we use in this house. That's not a word you're ever going to hear me use to you. And he said, don't ever let anyone shut you up. Your voice matters and it is powerful. And that always stuck with me um, so much. So I'm, I'm probably almost too vocal at times, but it was so encouraged that it just, you know, I feel like um, what an incredible gift to give your, your daughter or your, your child to let them know, like, there are going to be times in this world where people will want you to shut up. And so I went away to college and my sophomore year of college, I got pregnant. Mm. So I was 19 years old, dated my college sweetheart. We found out we were pregnant mm. and I can remember being so anxious because I'm like, oh my God, I have yeah. to not just my parents, like my pastor parents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I just remember, I I just, I prepare for the worst. Because yeah. they may disown me, they may, I, I just, every bad scenario I could think of raced through my mind. Yeah. And I called home, I said, mom and dad, I need to talk to both of y'all. And, oh, you know, of course we didn't have all the technologies, but, you know, <laughs> they put us on put us on speakerphone <laughs> yeah. and yeah. um i said i just went to the doctor today and to the hospital you know the university clinic and i found out that i was pregnant what's up bravehearts community this is sean heineman your premier pre-engagement coach back with another segment of it's scary to remarry wanting you to love fearlessly we are in part two of our father's day series a daughter's perspective this is in a phenomenal uh series and I have a special guest with us today. She is an author, a transformational speaker, entrepreneur, life coach, recording artist, and media personality. She is known for her quick-witted commentary and inspires her global audience by delivering a fresh message of hope and healing rooted in truth, wisdom, transparency, and authenticity. Bravehearts community, let's show some love to Winter Harris. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing amazing. Thank you for having me, Sean. I'm I'm looking forward to this. This is great. I'm excited. Yes, for sure. We, you know, we talked about it on Twitter and yeah. I got your tweet and I was like, I gotta have her on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and the reason for this series is because I wanted to debunk this whole thing about fathers and fathers not playing their part and things like that. We hear so much negativity. So I said, let's share some light on the positive aspects of yes. this. Let's jump into this because I want to honor your time. Can you share a special memory you have with your father? Oh, goodness. I have so many. <laughs> oh, like, oh, goodness. What can I remember? Oh, I now I got to narrow this down. Okay. So. You can share a couple. Me, okay. So I would say one of my earliest memories is that my dad worked for the local gas company and that required very long hours. Like he would work 10, 12 hour days sometimes. And when he would get home, he would always come sit down on the couch and he would say, come talk to me and tell me about your day. And he would take his hat off and put our put his hat on, on my head. And we would just have these long debriefing conversations because he still wanted to feel, I believe, um, connected to us, even though he worked a lot. Um, so that was a memory. And then my dad would spend one-on-one um, -on -one time with us. So he would get home after working long hours. And he also was a pastor. So that could sometimes be after preaching at church all day. And he would say, you know, Wink, what do you want to do today? And I'm like, I want to go look at houses. I don't know. I just like looking at houses. So because he worked for the gas company, he knew where all of the new developments were. And he would take me riding around and we would talk and bond and look at all these new houses. Uh, but I say for me, those memories um, just deposited such a, a loving um, foundation. And those were the times he really poured into me as a as a as a girl. Like, And I think those moments are irreplaceable for every girl that has a father in her life. And for me, those were, were the building blocks to my expectation as far as treatment from men. Mm. 
I love that. That is so good because I don't want to get ahead of myself because that's, I know. A, yeah, that's a whole message within itself because I want to yes. talk about that as well. So how has your relationship with your father evolved over the years as far as being young winter to an adult? Like, it has, has it always been the same or? No, it's went through a lot of changes. Mm. Um, Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. I would say from, I mean, I was raised as a princess. I can't speak for anybody else, but my dad was a girl dad. So I'm the oldest of three girls. And he embraced that um, girl dad role. Like he would just do all the elaborate things that I feel like girl dads do because girls are different than boys. He never had a boy. So he wouldn't even, he didn't know what boys were like until I had children and I had a boy. But um, over the years, I would say it's been, you know, the same. He's always been a source of wisdom for me. Um, as we've gotten older, we don't live in the same area. So I don't see him as often these days, but we do still keep in contact and he's literally the person I can still always have those deep conversations with um, if I need to. He's the one I can have a spiritual conversation with. So it's changed. But I would say my dad did his best work growing up. Like, I feel like he can coast now <laughs> because <laughs> he just did such a good job um, as we were growing up that I, I will never, ever take that away from his um, influence in my life. Yes. That is beautiful because I, I have a daughter as well. My daughter is 20. She'll be 21 this year. Okay. So I, I totally get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what life lessons has your father taught you that you still carry with you to this day? Okay. So me and my sisters have this joke. Mm. To this day, we still laugh about it because my dad, <laughs> he said the same thing over and over again to us. I mean, it was literally ingrained in us besides scripture, you know, yeah, like, yeah. and we would always tease each other. Like, what did dad always tell us? <laughs> know whose you are and know who you yeah, are. Really like, cool. those are two key things he would always share with us. And another huge thing, which is probably why um, I'm so vocal to this day, but my dad would always tell us, um, I will never tell you to shut up. That's not a word we use in this house. That's not a word you're ever going to hear me use to you. And he said, don't ever let anyone shut you up. Your voice matters and it is powerful. And that always stuck with me um, so much. So I'm, I'm probably almost too vocal at times, but it was so encouraged that it just, you know, I feel like um, what an incredible gift to give your your daughter or your your child to let them know like there are going to be times in this world where people will want you to shut up and mm -hmm. people will want you to be silent and people will want you to take a back seat and he always affirmed us in saying no and he never i i never had my, i my dad never told us to shut up even when we misbehave because that's a typical kid thing and i was the rowdy one and i i was i was the one that got in trouble a lot um 
He never told me to shut up. He would say hush or be quiet, but he never said shut up to us. And that always stuck with me that so much so as I got older <laughs> and I would date, you know, guys and everybody's not raised that way. Um, yeah. And I remember a guy telling me to shut up. When I tell you I lost it, <laughs> I was like, don't you ever tell yeah. me to shut up. Like my dad doesn't tell me to shut up. Like, who do you think you're talking to? I was so, um, oh man, that was a thing. But it was because of how I was raised and how he raised us. Mm -hmm. That's wow. That's beautiful because yeah. saying shut up to someone is, is, is pretty harsh. It is. It's very harsh. Yes. And, and 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 talking to kids, sometimes they can just rile your nerves, you know, but to ingrain that in your kids and to carry that into adulthood, that's that speaks volumes. I, yes. I love that. Oh my God. Oh, so what qualities do you admire the most in your father? What qualities do I? He was extremely hardworking. Mm -hmm. extremely hardworking, but I like to say my dad was, a. um, I got, I got my hustle from my dad. Mm. My dad was a hustler. Like because of him, I feel like I will never, ever fail. Mm -hmm. It's not to say that I won't experience failures, but I, those failures will never keep me down for too long. Mm -hmm. And it's literally because he taught us how to figure out ways to go get it. It may not work this way, but try a different way. Mm -hmm. um, he is the reason why I'm never too proud. Mm -hmm. um, I'm never too proud. And he's another reason why I feel like um, I'm very particular about how I carry myself. A lot of people may not understand that in today's world, yeah. uh, but my dad always taught us that presence was people's first impression of you. So how you walked in a room, let it be the best impression you can give, because that is going to be what people take away. Um, so I just admire my dad was sharp. Like when mm -hmm. I think back to grow, like my dad never wore jeans. Really? No. The only thing I ever saw my dad in was either a suit mm -hmm. or his work uniform. Wow. He didn't believe in going nowhere, not dressed up so much so that when he did finally start wearing jeans, mm -hmm. we had to tell him that it was not cute for him to be out here. In no, in no um, dress shoes with a pair of jeans. <laughs> like you need to find some sneakers, sir. That is not that is not the move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That is but he could funny. not separate, you know, his dressy side from. Yeah. I'm like, sir, if you don't go take them them dress shoes off with them jeans <laughs> and get some sneakers on, that doesn't matter. Oh, um, but yeah. yeah, that's that's I I admire. Um, yeah, I definitely admire my dad's work ethic, and he loved us so much. Like the way he loved and how he oh my gosh, how he treated people. Yeah, my dad never met a stranger. We hated going to him with the girl. We couldn't go to the grocery store, the post office. The mall, he would speak to everybody. Yeah. And we would be like, do you even know them? We would be like, I don't have to know them. Mm. And I'm like, you just had a whole 10 minute conversation with a stranger. He never met a stranger. He made it, made it, it was almost like it was his business mm. to greet people and talk to people and make them feel welcome or, or show them love. And yeah. So I would say how he treated people was also something that I, I admire about my dad. Mm, I love that. So are you, are you the same way or no? Yes. You are. I am. <laughs> Anyone who know I'm a very, I'm a huge people person mm -hmm. and my dad and I actually are the, so it's a family of five. Mm -hmm. Um, and even though my parents, they were married for 27 years, they're no longer married, but, um, <laughs> I call us the extroverts. And then my mom and sisters are the introverts. And so my dad and I actually have that in common. Like we talk to everybody. My sister hates going to any, going to events with me. Like I have now turned into my dad because <laughs> I don't meet a stranger. I yeah. don't. Yeah. I love it. That's a beautiful trait to have though. I mean, I always had an admiration for people who could just strike up conversations with strangers and make them feel welcome. Yep. It's a gift, I think. I, I agree. Can you share a time when your father supported you during a challenging moment? Oh, 
This is so good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So weirdly, I just shared this on my own YouTube channel. Randomly, it just kind of came up and I don't even know how it got on it. Um, so I was raised as a PK, mm -hmm. preacher's kid, for those who don't know. And in my case, I was a pastor's kid. My parents um, pastored a church. Mm -hmm. And so church was all I knew. Church was our life. It was our breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We were in yeah. church three to seven days a week. <laughs> like <laughs> church was everything. And so I went away to college. And my sophomore year of college, I got pregnant. Mm. So I was 19 years old, dating my college sweetheart. We found out we were pregnant. Mm. And I can remember being so anxious because mm. I'm like, oh, my God. I have yeah. To Not just my parents, like my pastor parents. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just remember I, I just... I prepare for the worst because yeah. they may disown me. They may, I, I just, every bad scenario I could think of race through my mind. Yeah. And I called home. I said, mom and dad, I need to talk to both of y'all. And, oh, you know, of course we didn't have all the technologies, but you <laughs> know, they put us on, uh, put us on speakerphone. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I said, I just went to the doctor today and to the hospital, you know, the university clinic. And I found out that I was pregnant. And literally, my dad was like, all right, so I'm. I, it's cool. I'm going to be a pop pop. I'm not going by grandpa. I'm going to be going by pop pop. And he was like, let us know if you need anything. And my mom was like, well, you need to come home so we can help. And, you know, you need to have support. You can't do this, you know, all by yourself. Yeah. And I just burst into tears mm -hmm. because I was like, what in the world? I It just wasn't what I expected. Yeah. And Dad yeah, was like, I don't know what you upset for. You know, I've been a pastor for a long time and you ain't the first person this has happened to and you won't be the last. Mm. At the end of the day, we love you. We're going to love our grandbaby and we're going to move forward. You're going to be all right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Just, for me, and, and if you've ever been raised with any sort of uh, religious construct, there's a lot of... Um, anxiety that comes with quote unquote failing. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was a failure. I understood that my child was a blessing, but that particular incident occurring, especially with my parents' position was just, I didn't know what to, you know, what to expect, but they loved on me in such an incredibly powerful way. Um, I did tell them, I said, I want to prove to y'all that I can do this and that I'm going to finish school. Mm. So I'm not going to come home. My college was about four and away, four and a half hours away from home. So that means I would have really had to move across state to go back home. And I felt like if I moved back home, I would never leave home. Mm. And that's just something I believed. And so I said, I'm going to stay. I'm going to figure it out. And I'm going to prove to y'all that I can do this. Yeah. I never moved back home. I graduated my, with my degree. Um, my college sweetheart and I actually ended up getting married. But they never saw me after that. Like I moved on, life moved on and I was wow. good. And I say it's because they supported me when they could have condemned me. Mm. And my dad's, um, because I didn't want to disappoint my dad. I was a daddy's girl. And his response to me, I felt like gave me the strength that I needed to show up where I needed to show up and mm. show up for myself and my child. And the rest is history, honestly. <laughs> wow. That's yeah, and like you said, you had to not only dad but pastor. So mm -hmm. there was there was two layers to this, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and and just showing you the love of Christ, like that's that's beautiful. And then on top of that, for you not to for you to actually finish on your own, like that speaks yep. volumes. You know, <laughs> Absolutely. You know, most people would have been home in a heartbeat, like I'll be there next week. Yeah, and they they were more than willing. I I was. Sharon, that honestly, that's the only instance where my mom got mad at me. She wasn't mad at me because I got pregnant. She was mad at me because I wouldn't come home. Mm. And I said, no, I said, I feel like if I come home, I won't ever leave home. And I just can't, I can't do that to myself. Mm. Um, so I did, I ended up moving on and I got my bachelor's degree and, and later on got my master's and later on um, two years of doctoral school in, but <laughs> yeah, I, I, that, that, moment was so profound um just because I needed that support like I, I didn't need the condemnation I didn't need the berating or the disappointment like I needed the love and the support and the grace and for me that was the that was literally the strength that I needed to keep pushing and moving forward and 
I think I've I think I've done all right, and I think I've I've made them proud. <laughs> For sure, that is I love it. That's so good. That that's a message within itself, but I'll, I'll shelf that for another time. <laughs> what role did your father play in shaping your views on family and relationships? Because I know you talked about the relationship piece, so yeah. let's talk. Oh about gosh, that. yeah. I have no tolerance for foolishness. I really, <laughs> and you know, it's interesting because I, I went through a divorce myself and we were married for 15 years. But mm. what I will say is that he instilled such a value for family that I tell people I stayed in a marriage eight years longer than I should have because I valued family so much. Mm. So keeping that family structure um, to me was so important. Um. So I, he modeled that for me. He modeled um, just respecting myself because I feel like you'll tolerate disrespect from others when you really don't, do, you don't respect yourself. That's mm -hmm. what it all stems back to. And he's always instilled such a high sense of self and self-esteem mm -hmm. that I have found times where I, I have failed myself in some instances that foundation has always rose back up again and I rediscover who I am and I'm like no I'm not I'm not dealing with this that or the other like and it's some people I would never entertain because of how my dad raised me because mm -hmm. I'm like listen I if I gotta set you before reverend you gotta come correct like reverend don't play like I can't just bring anybody in front of Reverend. Like Reverend's a, a hard cookie to, to to crumble. Like I gotta I gotta make sure. And Reverend, he hasn't. It, it's it's very um, it's select few that has met Reverend, and they and, and and some of them ain't passed. But you know, Reverend is very particular. But it's also always made me feel like. Um, because of how he raised us to um, like respect mm -hmm. men, mm -hmm. like I always respected my dad. So mm -hmm. there's a certain level of respect that I, I show up in in my relationships that I require that same respect back. We talk about a woman being submissive and um, showing up and being nurturing and caring and loving and supportive. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give all those things because my dad taught us about that and how important it was. But by the same token, mm -hmm. he was always like, look here, you deserve to be provi provided for, cared for, love, romance. My dad used to write us love letters. Oh, uh, that's cool. He did. Wow. He used to write us love letters. And my dad's birthday was just this past Sunday, actually. Um Wow. So it's interesting, but my I, I had sent him like a, a letter because that's what he does. He writes us letters. And even when we have moved far away because we don't live close to him anymore, um, he'll mail us letters. Mm -hmm. He will literally still go to the post office and mail us a letter. He would buy us flowers. Mm -hmm. So I, I tell people all the time, if any man that's ever dated me, if there's one general consensus that they all would have, they would say, yeah, she's spoiled. <laughs> she's spoiled. Yeah. And it's not necessarily spoiled with materialistic things. I'm simple because of my dad. But this man had ruined us by the time we left the house. I was flabbergasted when I got to college and realized every man didn't move like that. Mm. What you mean you don't write love letters? You don't get no flowers? Oh, like, what breaks you? <laughs> it was horrible. My standards were so, like, when I say hi, Mm -hmm. Any guy that went to college with me, they would be like, they, listen, you might can nab this one, that one, and this one, but whoop, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm. you, you, that's a tough, like my standards were so, but my dad did that. Yeah. Um, so much so when I did get married for the first time, I remember a lot of our arguments were because I compared him to my dad. Mm. And my dad had to have a real conversation with me because he was like, now, come on now. Like, you got to show some. But I'm like, he don't, he's not romantic. He don't write me. He don't bring me flowers. He don't write no letters. Like, what are we doing? And I know he probably was like, you need to go back home to your daddy. But, you know, like, I just, it was so, um, it was just, it was a new world for me. Because like I said, my dad, he definitely did his job. Uh, but it has definitely impacted just 
I wouldn't say an unrealistic expectation, but I also, um, I just expect what I feel like he, he's, he set for us. My dad didn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. He was a blue collar worker. He worked for the gas company. Like, and he didn't do these things to spend a bunch of money on us. He literally gave us time, love, and attention mm -hmm. and sprinkled in a little bit of what I call romance now, but he loved on us. Yeah. And so I tell people all the time, it's not about money. It, it's literally about the effort and the attention that you're willing to give. And um, he's responsible for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's responsible for that, for sure. I, I love that because I, I want to talk about this for a second, because what you're talking about is almost kind of rare to see for unfortunately right for women to daughters to get that kind of love and then like you said to have those differences with your spouse like you know he's not this he's not that because dad set such a standard right i think yes. that's yeah i'm gonna show up that for another time because i want to stay on topic i, I i'm gonna have to yeah be back. yeah it's we gotta real talk thing. it's a real thing i struggle yeah yeah Oh my God. Okay. Uh, if you could say one thing to your dad right now, what would it be? Oh gosh. Thank you for teaching me to know who I am and being solid in that. I feel like you go through a lot of growth and um, transition in life and, you know, life happens. I've been through a lot in my life, but that one piece of like wisdom from the time I was little, like he ingrained that in us. And I believe he did that because he knew that life was life and he knew that people were people. And if we didn't understand that, we didn't have a fighting chance in this world. So that's the one thing I would definitely thank my dad for. Mm, I love that. And describe your dad in one word. I describe my dad in one word. My dad is social. <laughs> so sure. Oh gosh. I would I feel like there's a lot of things I could say, but that will sum it up because yeah. I can't be social. Yeah. He's social. And I'm like, I can think of so many things, but social is who we knew him to be and who we will always remember our dad to be. So Yes. Yes. Well, that's a blessing because I mean he was a pastor, right? And, and yes. sometimes, you know, some pastors aren't as social, but you know, so that's a that's a beautiful thing, right? Listen, social, but he loved people. And that is invaluable. That one piece of seeing him communicate and talk to people he didn't know, that has served me so well, especially in the business that I'm in. Like mm -hmm. if I was nervous or timid or shy. It wouldn't necessarily work for me, yeah. but because he taught me to never meet a stranger, I can crush it every single time. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Wow. Love it. This has been a phenomenal episode. Thank you so much, Winter, for taking some time to be a guest today. Can you let everyone know uh, everything that you got going on? Tell us about the books, all, all of the good stuff. We'll have it linked in the description below. Yes. So you can actually follow me on YouTube. Um, it's at Winter Woman Land and you can find me under I'm Simply Winter. You can follow me on all socials. That's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all the things under I'm Simply Winter. And that's the letter I, the letter M, Simply Winter. I am launching two new media training courses. And so if you're interested in media training, Getting into the reality TV space, I'm offering two courses where you can learn the tricks of the trade and get into some media opportunities. Um, you can go to my website at simplywinter.com. I also speak. I'm all over the place. So if you're interested in booking me for your next event, you can simply email me at admin at winterwomanland.com. Other than that, I'm around. I, I love uh, Twitter and YouTube. And so you can always come hang with me over in Twitter where we met or we can have a good time and a good key over on YouTube. But simplywinter.com is the best place to connect with me. 
Awesome. Awesome. Well, you heard it here, Brave Arts community. Make sure you go connect with Winter. She has a lot of phenomenal things going on. And make sure if you are watching this via YouTube, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Share this video with a friend. Father's Day is coming up. You never know how this story could inspire uh, a dad or a daughter. Who knows? If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. By doing so, it'll put you on a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free things? This is Sean Heineman with special guest Winter Harris, and we are.